both watch collecting enthusiasts and casual wearers alike can agree that sometimes you fall out of love with your timepiece. Sometimes you want to change your reverso for a moon watch or your dress watch for a chronograph. And whether you want to thin out your collection or free up a little cash, we're all motivated to sell our watches from time to time. And maybe you just want to recoup some of the initial cost or maybe your plan is to make some money and who could blame you? Because the horological world is vast, it's exciting and it's full of deep rabbit holes and teeming with possibilities. And selling your watch to make way for a new purchase is or should be an exciting time. But the process of selling a watch can sometimes seem a little daunting. I know, I've been there countless times, even before I started doing it professionally, so I feel your pain here. And in today's mixed world of bricks and mortar stores and the disruptive attack from online e-commerce and seller marketplaces, what is the best way to sell your watch? Do you sell it? Do you trade it? Do you part exchange it or a direct sale to a dealer? Or do you consign it? And the million dollar question is, which method is best? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. I'm Marcelo from Prestige Watches and I have a lot of people come to me asking what I think is the best way for them to sell their watch. As there are a few options, choosing the right one can be a little confusing. The three main ways to sell your watch are, number one, manage the sale yourself privately, sell it directly to a buyer through forums or a marketplace middleman like Chrono24 or eBay, or if you have a rare and highly valuable watch, maybe a specialist auction house. Number two, you can sell your watch to a dealer who buys it directly from you. And number three, you can sign your watch to a professional to sell on a consignment service, sometimes known as sale or return or brokering. There are unique benefits for each of these options and they can differ depending on your circumstances. And later, I'm gonna give you three top tips. So stick around to the end so you can listen out for these. Now, if you feel your time is more valuable than maximizing the amount of money left in your hand after the sale, and you aren't too tech savvy and don't like possible headaches and hassles and risks that would come with potentially selling a watch, or you just can't be bothered with the process and you have bigger fish to fry, you might be better off selling or consigning your watch to a watch dealer or a watch professional. On the other hand, if you feel like you can get more money for selling the watches on your own and you have the spare time and you're up for the journey and the challenge and you're comfortable with the potential risks, then selling yourself might be the better approach. If you're planning to sell your watch to a dealer or a shop or a store or industry professional, they may offer you two options, a direct purchase or a consignment option. And there are pros and cons to both, which we'll look at later. And there are a few variables to take into consideration. A direct sale is where the dealer makes you an offer uh, for your watch based on the current market price of the watch or the current market value. But the dealer will consider how much they think they can sell it for now or in the very near future, and how much profit margin they want or need to make to satisfy the business needs, taking all the business overheads and costs into consideration, and they will then make you an offer. And it's worth noting here that what you paid for the watch is kind of irrelevant here. It's all based on current trends and current market demands. For example, if you paid £4,000 for a watch that's currently trading at around, say, £9,000, they won't offer you £5,000 based on what you paid for the watch. They'll more likely offer you £8,000 because it's £1,000 less than what they can sell it for, meaning they want £1,000 in gross profit. Or perhaps they'll offer you £7,000 because their business model requires them to make £2,000 on a watch owing to their business overheads and their business strategy. And another thing to note here is that if the dealer sells the watch for say £9,000 after buying it from you for £8,000, it may seem like they're making a thousand pounds profit, but really they're not. Well, sort of. One thousand pounds is the gross profit they're making on the watch, but the net profit, the amount of money they actually keep, is likely to be close to half of this. After business deductions such as the margin scheme VAT payments, salaries, rent, rates, system fees, banking fees, business and delivery insurance, uh, platform fees, 
the margin gets eroded away very, very quickly. And I made a video about the watch buying process and I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. So the reality is whatever the profit amount you think they're making on your watch, you can pretty much half that as a very approximate calculation. And it may even be less. Sometimes I'll offer you cash for your watch, sometimes a bank transfer, also called in the industry as a wire. And I'm hearing about payment being made using modern cryptocurrencies as well, such as Bitcoin, Binance and Solana. And whilst the direct sale to a dealer is fast and efficient, it can often be a rather cutthroat and bullish process where the dealers can sometimes operate in a rather no-nonsense, unfriendly approach, which I've heard can sometimes annoy possible sellers. Sometimes called sale or return, consignment is when an individual or a business sells your watch on your behalf. No money is exchanged hands at the start of the partnership and you own the watch through the whole process until it sells. You are the consignee, the person consigning the watch, and the seller becomes the consignor, the person tasked with selling it. And you and the pro or the business go on a little watch journey together where you both join forces and work together for a common goal, and that is selling the watch for the highest possible price as fast as possible. So the watch dealer's job is to find the best buyer and will then take a cut of the sale as a commission. So the professional will deal with all the admin involved with the selling of the watch in the right way and should take away all the headaches and hassles and help you, the seller, avoid all the possible perils and pitfalls of selling a watch. They'll earn a commission at the end of the journey once the watch is sold. As a really quick example, if you had a watch that was valued at £5,000 on the marketplace, let's say that you paid £3,000 for this watch. If you sold it to a dealer and they bought it directly, they might offer you £4,000 for it. If you were to sign that same watch to the dealer, they may sell it to the end buyer for say £5,300 and keep a £600 commission. So you get £4,700 in your hand, which is an extra £700 in your pocket than if you had sold it to the dealer directly. So if all goes to plan, the end result is you get to earn more from the sale than if you had sold directly to the watch dealer or the watch business. If the watch doesn't sell for whatever reason, normally because it's priced too high, then the agreement can be terminated and the watch returned to you if the dealer has retained it. So number one, extra cash for you. For many watch owners, making an extra 200 pounds or 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds or sometimes much more out of the sale of the watch is quite a significant extra amount. Number two is a wider reach and a bigger audience. And in the luxury watch world, consignment allows you to tap into professionals networks and reach a much wider audience than you otherwise would have access to. The people in these networks tend to be more experienced buyers who are actively looking for higher end luxury timepieces. And this increases the pool of potential buyers and your chance of finding someone willing to pay you the asking price for your watch. Number three, advice and consultation. A good consignor can also help you value the watch in the current marketplace, taking into account your buy price and your target sell price. And they can advise if that's a reasonable target price or if it's too high or maybe too low, they might suggest that you can achieve a higher price for your watch. Number four, expertise. So they will fetch a fair price for your watch based on market trends, something you might not be able to do if you were selling the timepiece on your own. And here you'll get to be guided through the process by a professional and also achieve a higher selling price over a direct sale. Number five, management and experience. You get to tap into their good knowledge and their buying and selling skills, and this should save you headaches and hassles. Consignment also has advantages for watch professionals like me, that's on the smaller side, when compared to behemoths like WatchFinder with their huge employee count and snazzy city offices around the world and big bank balances and working capital. It allows me the opportunity to sell watches, build new relationships with the seller and the buyer without having to lay out cash upfront in order to obtain the watch. Which can be a challenge for a smaller company like mine where cash flow and working capital is an occasional challenge. If for example, I've spent all my funds getting watch stock into the business for inventory to sell, then my working capital or money left to buy other watches can run a bit low. 
Whilst there are pros and cons to both large and small dealers, it's likely a larger company will most likely charge a higher amount for their watches as they need to make higher profits in order to cover their larger overheads and satisfy their investors and shareholders. Whereas someone like me on the smaller side or other independent dealers, they don't have these factors to, to deal with. Also, because of their monster overheads, they'll need to be brutally aggressive with their buying too, which isn't good for sellers because it means that they need to buy their watches lower so that they can sell them for higher and make a better profit. So here you can see the different driving forces and business motivations. With the larger companies, it's cold cash making and profit making versus with smaller companies, relationship development and being helpful and being a useful guide in the industry. But big company, small company, profit making, relationship building, that's business and that's what makes the world go round. Now there are options out there for everyone and some people will like dealing with bigger organisations and some will probably prefer dealing with a smaller company. And I have a personal opinion about the profits made from the sale of an individual's watch and it's this. I personally see that this is your watch and you deserve to make and keep the lion's share of the profits from the sale of your watch. But ultimately in your selling process it comes down to what's more important to you personally. Faster cash with a lower profit amount in your hand or potentially wait a little longer to sell your watch and result with more cash in your hand, more profits from your watch. So consignment can be a longer process, it can take a little longer with no guarantee that your watch will sell at the end of the process. A successful sale is dependent on your chosen partner's ability to market and promote your watch to its network of buyers, which is why some dealers who know their target audience very well and know what their buyers are interested in are a little more selective about the watches and the models that they take on on a consignment service to help increase the chance of their sale. For example, I might have an audience of 20 to 70 year old business professionals that are interested in a certain range of watches. Another dealer may sell to celebrities or extremely high net worth individuals or footballers or pop stars and they'll have an entirely different audience to me. So this person may not be able to sell the same sort of watches that I can sell so they may choose not to take on a certain watch for consignment. And likewise another dealer may specialise in vintage watches and have a vintage watch buying client base, not one that would buy large sized iced out bling watches that the celebrity watch seller might be selling. So let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of the different selling options. Okay, there's three pros of selling the watch yourself and that is number one, you get faster cash. Number two, there's no middleman, which can have pros and cons to be honest, but you're in full control. And number three, you can maximize your profits. I can also think of three cons to selling yourself and that is number one, the risk, dealing with the buyer, the exposure, the handling of the payment. There are scammers out there so that process can be a little risky. Uh, number two is just the hassles and headaches that come with selling a watch yourself. And number three, it can be time consuming and distracting. If you're a busy and important person, you may not have the time to spend selling your watch. Selling directly to a dealer, I can think of three pros. Number one is you'll get the cash faster. Number two is lower risk. And number three is lower hassle. You won't have the headaches to deal with all of the other processes. I can think of one con to selling directly to a dealer uh, and that is the lower price you'll get for your watch. Missing out on some potential cash. And lately I've had a lot of people coming to me rather vexed by the very low prices that a lot of dealers are offering. So pros and cons to consigning to a dealer. I can think of four pros here. Number one, the higher return for you. You get to keep more of the profits from the sale of your watch. Number two, you get to work with a trusted professional as a guide and a consultant. And it can be a fun and interesting journey from start to finish, if that's something you enjoy. Number three, it's low hassle for you. The dealer will do a lot of the heavy lifting, they'll do a lot of the hard work, they'll take all the hassles and headaches. Uh, and number four is that it's low risk, as the dealer will have more experience, they'll know what they're doing, they'll know what to look out for, um, experience goes a long way. I can think of two cons 
for selling your watch on consignment. And that is, number one, it will most likely take longer than a direct sale directly to a dealer. And number two, the risk of choosing a bad partner. And we'll talk about that a bit later. So if you're looking to make a quick sale and generate money immediately, consignment may not be the right option for you because it can take weeks, sometimes even months, to find the right buyer, get your watch sold, and for you to earn your money. I'd like to add about consignment. I'm often concerned with getting into what I call the buyer-seller dance when it comes to valuing a watch. And that is managing the two opposing forces at play here. The buyer naturally wanting a low price for the watch for obvious reasons, and the seller, again for obvious reasons, wanting a high price for the watch. Now, these opposing forces are very real, like the opposite sides of a magnet repelling one another. The process can sometimes cause bad feelings, and that's not something I really enjoy. And this is why I sometimes like to actually offer people the option to consign their watch for sale. Now, whilst I do often purchase watches from customers, if my funds are low, which is a genuine business challenge for a small to medium sized dealer like myself that has working capital to take into consideration. Offering a consignment service allows me the option to still provide a professional service to my customers. Now I don't have bottomless pits of money so I can't buy everything that comes my way but I still like to provide a service and to be helpful to my customers. When I do sell on consignment I personally achieve a lower amount than if I bought and sold the watch directly, buying the watch outright and then selling it outright. Consignment services does sometimes have a bit of a bad rap when unscrupulous dealers get up to their naughty tricks but a key difference with me compared to some other dealers is that I do invite clients to keep hold of their watch if they want to. After all I don't need to retain their watch but I do need to inspect it for all the right reasons before selling it but once I have inspected it and do everything that I need to do I'm happy to return it. I also provide formal documentation for everyone's peace of mind. So before you can sign your watch, make sure your partner is a reputable and dependable professional that you can rely on because that's one of the most important things when buying and selling a watch. Be sure to work with someone you can trust. A good and trusted professional will become your mini business partner who will help pave the way for a successful outcome for, for you. You want to avoid a situation where your timepiece becomes damaged or worse, lost because the store shuts down or something. With luxury watches, trustworthiness is everything. It removes risk, it creates good feelings and it banishes worry. So now here are the three tips I promised you for having your fingers on the pulse when it comes to consigning a watch and choosing the right business dealer or partner to partner up with. Tip number one, make sure the company is a solid and reputable company. Don't be afraid to go deep here and do deep checks. Just having a, a website isn't good enough. Any scammer with a spare three or four hundred pounds can make a nice looking website. Can you find out information on the person you're dealing with? Are they discoverable? Are they on LinkedIn? Do they have online presence, maybe on Instagram or YouTube or on their website? Or are they elusive? Check to see if the company you're dealing with is registered on company's house. Does the company have a company number, an official company number? Feel free to check out the company directors. Do they have any CCJs, which is a county court judgment? This can be a sign of the types of people that you're dealing with. Not always, and it isn't entirely clear cut, but the information is out there if you need it or want it. Check to see if the company is VAT registered. And this is by no means critical, but it does denote a little bit about the size of the company. For example, if they trade under 85,000 pounds, they will not need to be VAT registered. If they trade above 85,000 pounds, they will need to be VAT registered. Now, a watch dealer could potentially burn through 85,000 pounds very quickly. That's just one high-end AP or Patek or several Rolex watch sales. It wouldn't take long. Some watch dealers like to be uh, creative with how they work with cash flow and money coming in and out and each to their own I say but you can make your own call on that. You can also check the company reviews, Trustpilot or testimonials or maybe there's trade references. You can perhaps look to see if they're accredited with any industry bodies. Are they trusted sellers with any reputable sources? And dial in your antenna here and listen to your hunches. And 
If you're getting any value from this, please let me know by hitting the like button. Tip number two, something to consider, which I touched on earlier. Don't necessarily be sucked into the tractor beam of large, big monster organizations. They do have a big gravitational pull because of their advertising and marketing clout, but bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. And smaller doesn't necessarily mean less capable. Make sure you don't confuse a, a big company with a good company and a smaller company as a bad one. I've found in the past often smaller companies, as long as they're trustworthy and reputable, they will work harder, they're more spirited and ambitious and have a more dogged and determined approach to doing business, which can be good. I also find that smaller companies are normally more flexible. I have found in the past that bigger organisations often start experiencing the, the curse of financial greed and needing to drive higher profit margins to feed the beast of a machine, um, higher employee count with large salaries and to cover their huge buildings and overheads and this often means higher prices. Maybe they've even got shareholders or investors to please. But on the downside, smaller businesses will most likely have less working capital, less disposable income, so less likely to be able to buy every watch that comes along their path. So for a smaller company, cash flow will be more of a problem than larger cash rich companies. But that doesn't mean a smaller organisation will be less capable or less professional or certainly less caring. And as long as there is experience and trustworthiness, capability and dependability, you should be okay. Tip number three is to check carefully the consignment agreement and the fine details. Be sure to ask for a clear example of how the whole thing works from start to finish. And don't be afraid to ask for company details or information on the seller and see how they react. If they're squirmish, this could be a bit of a red flag. But as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to hide here. They should be willing to give you the company information that you want. And make sure you're sure to get a receipt, a written receipt, for any watches that you leave behind. And don't be afraid to ask if you keeping the watch is an option for you. Do find out how and where the watches are stored and make sure they're covered on their business insurance. And don't be afraid to ask to see their business insurance to make sure everything is above board you have the right to do that. In this process, it's very important to filter the good professional watch dealers that offer a genuine consignment service with a genuine interest to achieve a win-win outcome from the disingenuous ones. Now, not all watch dealers and sellers are created equal and work the same way. Their business requirements, their personal drivers, their business models, their financial goals, it can vary from company to company. So selecting the right company DNA and culture and company ethics that matches your personal style is very important here. A single method or a fixed way, my way or the highway approach of working with a trusted watch dealer isn't ideal for most people. So you must do your homework on the dealer and not be lured into an untrustworthy web of deceit and bad business practices. Don't be pressured into working in a way that doesn't suit you or makes you feel uncomfortable. And I do suggest you trust your instincts here. We've all been gifted with that wonderfully weird little sixth sense and it's there for a reason. If you find a trustworthy dealer with a good heart and good intentions, then there's no reason why a consignment service cannot work for you. Okay, so what happens next? Once you've chosen a consignor, it's time to enter into a formal agreement that sets out the terms of the consignment. And this agreement includes things like your minimum selling price, and of course your target price, their commission rate, when and how you'll be paid, the mode of payment, cash or wire, bank transfer, PayPal or whatever. How do they store their watches? Any additional administrative fees? So what do I do when I get a watch for consignment selling? Well, I'm sure it'd be similar for other watch professionals, but my personal process is this. I receive the watch, possibly a range collection. I check and inspect the watch and any concerns. Um, I'll wheel in my horologist who's forgotten more about watches than I'll ever know and he'll check the authenticity of the watch, the box, the paper and make sure it all lines up correctly. 
I'll clean the watch, I'll photograph the watch, I'll research the watch if it's unfamiliar to me, I'll write the copy for the sales listing, a compelling sales write-up, I'll upload the watch to my online platforms and my website and Chrono24 and some other places, I'll promote the watch for sale online, social media, WhatsApp groups and word of mouth, I'll deal with the initial inquiries, usually the low ballers and the tyre kickers, and I'll manage the serious inquiries negotiating with hagglers. I manage inquiries to a sale, handle the payments, deal with the delivery information, the address, the delivery date, the availability to sign for it. I'll book couriers, check and chase delivery and ensure it's safe arrival. And then of course do the after sale follow-ups. And even getting a watch delivered in today's world uh, is no small undertaking. UK to UK deliveries isn't so much of a problem, but delivering watches internationally requires quite a high level of expertise if it's done properly. So getting the watch packaged up suitably, booking the couriers using all the correct information, it requires a lot of knowledge and experience. Or the watch risks getting stuck in customs and not being delivered, which is a nightmare. Handling the import and export documentations and being sure that import tax and payment processes are explained clearly in advance to the buyer if they're international, that's a very important part in a successful delivery. I'll leave a video card at the end of this video linking to a video I made about this process. It's pretty heavy. So thank you for watching. My passion here in my business is helping watch enthusiasts make and save money with their watch goals. And I like sparing customers their hassles and the headaches and saving their valuable time when it comes to buying and selling their watches. My mission here on this channel is to share my knowledge and provoke thought and guide watch lovers through the different processes that are out there. Trying to help them avoid the pitfalls and the perils in buying and selling watches, which can be fun and enjoyable, but there are also risks. So now I'd like to know about you. What do you think about consignment versus direct sales? Do you have any experiences you can share, whether they're good or bad? Did I miss anything? Please let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it. I love this watch community that we're in and I love being part of it. If you want to watch more industry and business related videos, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on weekly tips. And if you have any thoughts or requests for me to cover other topics, please let me know in the comments below. As always, I'd love to hear from you. And if you've got some spare time, nip over to my website and see what watches I have for sale. And there's a really good free download there as well, a collector's guide to buying and selling luxury watches. Head over there and download it. It's full of useful tips. I think you'll like it. Cheers and see you on the next one.